Hi everyone, welcome to Raising Awareness with Vincent Sism. My name is Tim Wagner for the Avalon Foundation. And if it looks like I've aged a few years since you've seen me last here with Vincent, it's because I have aged a few years since I've been here on here with Vincent. Vincent, it's been quite a bit of while since we've done one of these, but it's always good to have you back here. Yeah. What? What? How come we waited so long? Well, the first thing was mainly COVID. COVID was not a great time for anyone, so I figured, and I was a little worried about other people's health, especially you, Tim, since you already were up in age. Thank you very much for that. Yeah. <laughs> so I didn't want to risk you being I there. appreciate that. That's and then nice once COVID wasn't a problem, I was waiting on this shirt, which I got from my Uncle Bruce. It's a barrier shirt? Yep. They're nice shirts. They're very yep. comfortable. They're very comfortable. So we haven't done this since COVID? Has this been four years? Yeah. Four years. They, that, that, that explains the aging. Yeah. Um, what was your... Did you get? I don't want to talk about COVID, but like, did you? Were you in? How how did you? Did you protect yourself when you were in COVID, or did you not believe in any of it? Um, I protected myself with a mask because my workplace required it. But when I was alone, I did not wear a mask because I knew right off the bat that masks were going to cause me to have trouble breathing. Uh huh. So at the very least, COVID was a concern for me, but not as big a concern as it was for other people I do. Right. Good, good, good. Um, and uh, what, Vince, just on your, so how are you doing? I mean, how are you? How Much are, better. How old are you now? You should bring age up, so how old are you now? 36. Oh my, you're a baby. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then where are, you, where are you working these days? I'm still at Target, and one of my favorite stories involving Target now is when they, the day they say that you, if you were vaccinated, you could take the mask off, ripped it right off in the parking lot <laughs> while I was getting carts. How, now how, how long have you been working at Target? You've been working there a while. Seven right? years. Seven years, yeah, and they treat you well over there. Oh, yeah. That's great, great. And the store is busy? Yeah. Uh-huh, good. And you know Michael McCormick? I believe so. He's going to start working there. He's going to do a part-time work over there. For, he's been over there before. He works here at the theater, but you'll see him around. He'll be trying to boss you around, I'm sure. Okay. Don't let him do it. <laughs> so, uh, this is episode of this is called Guess Who's Back. Yep. I think we just kind of explained that. Yep. <laughs> um, but what we do here is talk about uh, disability issues to some extent. And, and um, for those of you who are new to the show, uh, and we... Generally, kind of start off with this question, which is, you know, what is uh, uh, the general public's conception about people with, with conception with people with disabilities? What do you find in someone on? Well, in in this small town, it wasn't ever really bad, but it's definitely improved in certain areas. Online, however, the amount of the pro amount of people that I'm concerned about with disabilities has massively increased. Like, COVID really made some people who were not exactly doing well mentally really break down. Right, right, yes, it did, it, it did. Um, COVID affected things in a lot of ways. Uh, what, 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 let's go back, how is it, you say, it's improved locally. What do you mean when you say that, Vincent? Like, there have been some instances where people in the area recognize when someone's having a issue with one of their disabilities and hop in to help. Like, that's one of the best things about this area. People with disabilities are treated well, and so are the people who are caretakers of them. Right. And then where do you, do you go to a disability support group? Where do you, where do you, uh... I used to work at Benedictine. That's what I was, yeah, Benedictine, right. But mm -hmm. I don't work there anymore, but Benedictine does show up at Target now, so... It's one of those things where it... People have been receiving massive improvements. Right, and you hear that from Benedictine. Benedictine tells yeah. you that. Yeah, 
That's, that's wonderful. Um, so you general how if you're going to give it a grade from a F being terrible to A plus meaning great, how would you grade it uh, right now? For our area, I would say about a A, not quite a plus. I've there are certain places that are better, but I'll put it into context. A plus is the state of Virginia, actually. Why? What do they do? Like, put simply, the governor has, the recent governor has done quite a, signed a few laws that have really focused on disabilities in general. What's a law that would affect you? Or not affect you, affect someone with a disability. I mean, I, I, it's pretty general, but like, what kind of things do you think we need to consider as, as legislators? Uh, specialized training for officers, which this is why Maryland was so ahead of the curve, but Virginia, their governor moved ahead and is making sure officers are trained on almost every disability and every mental health issue he can find that affects more than 1% of his state. Right, right, right. That's great. That's great. Um, and then, uh, what, what, but F would be something like Africa in general. Why? What do they do wrong? Um, if you have a disability in Africa, get out of Africa because you don't have much to live. Is that right? Yeah. <laughs> they, they still kill some people with disabilities depending on where in Africa you go. Uh, what do you, what do you mean? What, I mean, uh, like... I believe you. What, what are you talking about exactly? I don't know about this stuff. Like, in Africa, if you're found to have a disability that hinders your ability to... Produce? produce yep. Uh-huh. Or to assist others. Uh-huh. You're typically killed before you get to adulthood. How do they kill you? Beheading? Uh, like, stabbing... Some of them with guns will do firing squad to get you out of the circulation. They, you know it's coming. They tell you we're gonna we're gonna arrest you and kill you. But that, what is what, what is wrong? Yeah, that's why Africa. <laughs> well, yeah. Can you get this show in Africa? We gotta get it over to Africa for God's sake. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Somebody stream it over in Africa or tag somebody and let them see it. My, that's terrible. I mean, yeah. other countries do that. Uh, Africa is the rare exception. Like, the lowest any other continent gets is typically D. Uh-huh. Which is? <laughs> which is basically they do nothing. They do... They either treat them with less respect or treat them as less of a human being, but they don't outright kill them. That's F tier. And this is... Wow. And see... How do you find this information out? I mean, do you... I'm online quite a bit these days, uh -huh. and I research different disabilities. I've known about the Africa problem since 2015. 2015, wow. And you want to know what It's not getting any better. It... I'll put it simply. One country in... One country in Africa is now a D. That's the highest any country, and that's specifically South Africa, because they will, they are less of a third world country, gotcha. and and third world in general. When you're in a third world country with a disability, you're kind of screwed. Right, Vincent. I mean, what do you think about this um, sort of uh, treatment for people who are different, whether it be in some countries, women or some countries, disability. What, what do you th what do you think about that type of behavior? Like, whenever I hear a story about Africa and disabilities, or women in China or Japan in general, it's I'm forced to get on my knees and pray these days. Because I literally don't know what to do to help them out, but yeah.
it's scary. It is. I mean, it is. I'm glad. I'm, glad. I'm so grateful <laughs> to live here in America that because, like, America as an average is like a B minus. Mm -hmm. They will actually address some of the issues they are dealing with, but not too many. And Maryland's doing much better. And it was previous governors who made sure the officers got training. The current one hasn't specifically done anything for the for people with disabilities, but he has at the very least, not trying to reverse any of the training the officers have received. Right, right. Um, can you talk, you don't have to if you don't want to, a time when you've been sort of treated as lesser than? Has uh, that happened to you or has that happened for a long time? You, you're that, known around town. People know who you are. You know they, That has not happened in real life in over a decade. Wonderful. That's so, cool. around here, Pretty good. That's good. One of the interesting stories involving how things have improved around here, though. Yeah. Like, this is a more minor thing, but there was an incident with Benedictine. One of its employees was at Target, and one of them had... I wasn't sure what they were having. It was either a Caesar or something... Or a mental breakdown. Uh -huh. And they were at the checkout. And someone noticed it. And actually told, handled the end of it. Told the caretaker, take care of this. I'll scan your items for it. Right, right, right. Like, and started scanning their items just to help them get... Done while they were addressing the issue. Right. And I was like, that is freaking awesome. Right. Sure. And you're probably proud because you work there. Yeah. And but but here's the thing. I can't remember if it was a employee who was off the clock or if it was just a random person in the area. Uh -huh. But either way, it was awesome. What type of things... Uh, I don't want to mean to sound insensitive. I just don't don't know what type of things. When somebody goes through a situation like that, whether it's a seizure or whatever, they have no idea when it's coming on. Is that correct? Or you can you, you like, have friends that you um, like depending on the person. It's like you have a ninety five percent of the time they have no clue when it's going to happen. About five percent of the time there's some lead up. Uh huh. Gotcha. Okay, and and this since the uh, since the series has started, what uh, what events have you noticed in the treatment of this with with people with disabilities in the in the treatment side of it? The treatment side has been definitely. It's one of the reasons why Maryland is doing so well because officers are getting a lot more training on how to address certain issues. And I found out that one of the things the pre Hogan did was have it so that officers could pick up medications for people who were in jail. Uh huh. And the person who was in jail did, if I hear this correctly, did not have to pay for it. And like that little thing alone, sure, yeah, will help out someone with serious issues, right? What well, and and you think it's because of the focus on mental health that these things are going on? Yeah, and as I've stated in the past, people with disabilities, if you're if you have one disability, you're seventy percent more likely to have a mental health issue. Having two of them basically guarantees it. And that's in comparison to the average person. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. Um, so things are improving. 
much. Now, online, uh, we're going to get to that. We're going we're to take a break here and get to that. We're, I know you want to talk about the discourse that's going online. I want yeah. to talk to you about that. Um, one of the final like, uh, uh, topics here for the first half of this is, is uh, how does a Social Security disability insurance get determined? I think you want to like let people know something. So here, right? this one actually came from someone in the area. The other two actually came from online. Uh-huh. And Social Security was varies from state to state. Some say it, the majority of states actually do it based on, if I remember correctly, based on how many hours you're working. While some factor more so income. The ones that do income don't have this weird separate but there are still differences in most states. Like So they either do it by whether you're working or not or how many working, or how much you make. Yeah. And for some states on the income side they will actually factor in any lottery winnings. Not all states. I don't know if Maryland's one of those, but some states will factor in med will factor in so, scratch outs or lottery. So how would you say a person should pre pre prepare when they're looking to claim it? When you're going to claim it, find out what it is in your state. And make sure you know which what they are looking for and more importantly any weird additions because there are a couple of states I I've only been told that's the case in a couple of states I don't know which ones but some states that do it by the hours will also factor in volunteer hours okay okay good that's good now, oh, for what I understand, those volunteer hours are considered a half better. Uh huh. Okay. So, like, certain incomes are considered a half better. Okay. But not very few states actually do the volunteer hours as factors. But if it's a state that does income, you don't have to worry about your volunteer. Gotcha. Because if it's not paying you. To volunteer there, they don't care. Right. Maryland is income. Income. But, Maryland's income. Yeah. Gotcha. Gotcha. Now, before we go to break here, you research this stuff online. You're online looking at disability issues all the time? Yep. Where do you search? Uh, just check it up on different YouTube videos and online you don't want to give away your sources do you yeah like <laughs> like one of the ones that you should absolutely avoid is avoid is autism speaks because put simply yes they are some of the worst even on autism because some of them are like Oh, this person can't even function half the time. Right. Like, I haven't found anything as bad as Autism Speaks, but Autism Speaks, put bluntly, puts autism in a negative light. Gotcha. Gotcha. So, Go ahead. So, but some places, they, they overgeneralize. That's part of the reason why I don't want to give out sources because some of them might overgeneralize, some of them go into way too much detail. Uh huh. And, and you're kind of in the middle. Yeah, I'm trying to find sources that are not super specific, and but also not paintbrush. Gotcha. Gotcha. So, but for some of those people, they are, they, I haven't found a website that is both specific about certain issues they deal with, but also not gonna say, okay, so one member of our, of this disability has 
has Caesar's Weekly, so we're going to say that. Right, yeah, yeah. so they're talking about every, treat everybody with the, paint with the same brush, as you said. All right, Vincent, uh, we're going to take a quick break here. We're going to come back and talk with, uh, in the second segment about hot topics. Um, it's always sort of a fun segment, and Vincent, it is great to have you back here. Just trying to make it four years next time. Yeah. <laughs> we'll be right back with more Raising Awareness. Uh, guess who's back with Vincent Sism? We are MCTV, Midshore Community Television. We want your help in making our station more robust so that we can better serve the residents of Talbot County. So, how can you help? If you are already making video content, submit that content for broadcast to the station. It's free! Are you involved in events, shows, or lectures that would be of interest to the community? We can work with you to figure out the best way to capture those events for airing on MCTV. Be it training, equipment rental, or hiring our production staff to film at a reasonable rate. Do you want to produce your own show? Let us help you get started. Come be a part of this valuable community resource. Email the station at nick at avalonfoundation.org or visit us in the basement of the historic Avalon Theater at 40 East Dover Street in downtown Easton. Welcome back to Raising Awareness with Vincent Sism here. This is the Guess Who's Back episode. As we said, we haven't been here in a long time. Four but years. Four, <laughs> four years. But the thing is, is that you're still, they, they haven't cut you. You're still, in, they still want you to keep doing your shows, Vincent. Yep. Like, so that's awesome. Um, uh, let's remind everybody in this, first of all, what are your disabilities? Uh, ADHD, Asperger's Syndrome, and Mood Disorder. Right. What is a mood disorder? My mood disorder is whenever I get triggered, and I don't mean like the the people who say, "Oh, this triggers me." No, legitimate triggers. I more or less become the Incredible Hulk without the green skin. You become the Incredible Hulk without the green skin. More or less, like if I was to be triggered, I could literally toss a couch at you. You could throw a couch. You could pick up the couch. Pick up a couch and hit you with it. Hit, hit some. <laughs> have you, have you done? I mean, how, no, I have you, not done that. When did you get control of this? How did and how? What controls that? Like my dad trained me on how to keep it in check. Uh -huh. So, so now, depending on what triggers me, I can absolutely keep it in check. That's awesome. But a lot of you know, a lot of people can't do that. You know, so that's good. Like. 95% of the people who have my, my specific mood disorder that get triggered like this, they can't control it at all. Uh -huh. Like, and they get scary. Like, one example my dad had, he was pissed off at his girlfriend's son okay. for something. I forget what. Well, we'll leave that out. And he went outside to his loaded pickup truck, oh, okay. picked it up, and dropped it. Just to get his frustrations out. Did um, that work? Does that work when you do something like that? It got you know, in other words, you don't, keep, you don't keep going. You don't pick up the couch and then go in and rip the sink out. Once you get something done like that, is that... Is that... Typically, the way I get it released is I... Pound the I pound a pillow. Uh huh. Gotcha. Now, fortunately, I haven't had to need to do that in a few years. Good, 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 good. Because you're figuring it out. Well, you well, I'm not being triggered. And for each person, it's different triggers. If you were to now, a common one for that one is, I is that like when they get attacked. Like, that's 99.999%. So they're defending themselves, you mean? Atta or attacked, like, just verbally, or... No, attacked physically. Uh-huh, okay, okay, yeah. Like, they will... But for someone like me, a similar one, but not guaranteed, is if you attack someone I care about. Gotcha. Not everyone has that, but it's quite common. But... There have been weird situations, like, for some, one berserker I heard about, and that's the, 
nickname we are given, the Berserker. Uh, okay, okay. Um, we, someone point, someone, when they smell certain, certain smells, it sets them off. Okay, oh, that's something else. That's something totally different. No, it's actually the same thing. Well, no, I mean, the tri- the, the result is, but the trigger, if someone, is, if someone insults your friend, that's... No, not insult. But if somebody smells something bad they don't like, those are two very separate things, correct? No, it's not necessarily something that smells bad. Like, someone, when they smell a certain cologne, they get triggered. Uh-huh. But, okay, well, that's something to watch out for, I guess, you know? Yeah, now... Like, the percent of the population in most countries don't even have it at 1%. Gotcha, okay. okay. So, it's not something you have to be worried about. I think America is on the higher end at just under a percent, at like 0.94. But it could happen. Something could smell something and it could trigger it. I got you, okay. That, but that, those the more we become aware of the stuff, the better, right? Yeah. Now, would could I say something about that hat? Would that trigger you? No. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Where'd you get the hat? I got this at a consignment shop in St. Michael's. The old straw hat got ruined between the last episode and now, so... New hat. Yep. I and like it. And it keeps you in the shade, that sort of thing. Well, I only wear it for this one. I have a regular hat. Regular from, baseball cap, right? Yep. Gotcha. All right, Vincent, so these are the hot topics. Talk to me about AI. So AI, a lot of people are concerned about AI replacing jobs. And they, the pay of the company they work for, yeah, they can very much be worried. But some people in the artist sphere are upset about art. Yes. It do say I and if it's used as a tool to improve one's art, like you generate an art piece and someone you give it to someone as a reference, they now one of those AIs was, and I'm never gonna let Google down for this one. It was showing it struggled to show. It showed George Washington as a black person. Okay. And, yeah, that was ridiculous. Because he wasn't African American. Yeah, he was Caucasian. And a lot of people were like, what the actual heck? And they showed, they enforced diversity early on. Yes, they have gone back, but... Yeah. Right, right, okay. Well, it's, so how do you feel about AI? If it's used as a tool, perfectly fine. Technically, we've had AI for a lot longer. Like, depending on how you define AI, a which is a machine doing something as a human would somewhat resemble we've had it ever since we've had text-to-speech. Uh-huh, gotcha, gotcha. So, Depending on how you define AI. Now, actual intelligence, we're not there yet. Right, right. Well, it's going to be a crazy time when we get there. And you're only 36, so you'll probably live to see it. We're going uh, to see some crazy stuff coming up, Vincent. Yep. Um, what do you want to talk about crime here? What do you, what's, what's... So, one of the things that a lot of people have been worried about is the amount of crime in certain areas. And Are you talking nationwide or are you talking county? Uh, not just nation. Okay. Like, worldwide. Crime has been getting out of hand in general. Uh Uh-huh. Over the planet. Like, China... China and Japan are probably safer than most other countries in comparison. But that's... China... Japan has the conviction rate, and China has... I mean, Japan has the conviction rate of 99.8%, so, yeah, they're definitely keeping their place safe with that. But China, uh, 
let's just say China has its unique ways. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, <laughs> and and what this is not gonna air in China, so Tiananmen Square is on the mild side now. Oh, compared okay. to what China will do now to people who who are against the government. What do you think that signif this crime uh, you know, sort of increase you're speaking of, what do you think that signifies? They, a lot of people are getting a lot more desperate as of late, but some people are like, depending on the area, they're taking advantage of the area. Like, let's talk about New York okay. for a little bit. Go ahead. New York is currently dealing with quite a bit of shoplifting and various other things. And it's getting to the point where stores have had to shut down because literally they can't keep the, the bills paid. Because, yeah, because you know, they're taking so much stock, they're taking so much inventory. Yeah. And that's part of, part of the reason I wanted to talk about crime. Yes. Is because our area, specifically this town, our local police do an awesome job. Like, like yes, they're a little lacking still to this day on certain areas, like, more minor theft, but if it's like anything that will result in bodily harm, you're lucky if you get out of the county before the police get you. Right, right, right. Yeah, we have a wonderful police department here, you think, then? I, One of the best. Ever since I've actually been giving them coffee for how good of a job they've been doing. How do you, when do you do that? I do it about once a month on Tuesdays, typically. How many, how many coffees do you take down there? I take a, like a... Big thermos? A big container of ground coffee. Oh, good, okay. you bring them actual coffee. Oh, good, good. That's all. That's nice, Vincent. Yeah. On Tuesdays, once a month. Yep. That's awesome. That's really They're nice. Been doing you. it since March of 2021. Good. Good for you, buddy. That's, very, that's, that's a great example for people. Yeah. If anyone wants to help out the local police department, just buy a quart of coffee and take it over. If somebody else buys the coffee, you buy the muffins? <laughs> no. <laughs> gotcha. All right. Now we're going to talk about something that is uh, just everywhere. And, you know, I'll, I'll leave my own thing. What online discourse? There's I'll a conspiracy just, theory for everything. It's not just the conspiracy theories Go ahead. that are causing problems. It's like some people and really are showing who they really are online because they think they can hide behind anonymity. Uh huh. Like one person, we can say whatever you want, right? They're never going to catch you. They're never going to. They're not near you. Can, Go ahead. One person what? One person literally said that in reference to the you-know-what attempt on you-know-who. The assassination attempt on Donald Trump? Yep. Oh. I don't like saying that. Someone actually said, okay, I wish that person had not missed. Uh-huh. Yeah, we've heard a couple things like that. Yeah. Like that. Anyone wishing death upon a person... Is don't care who you are politically. Assassination attempts are very rarely accepted unless it's like a trying to stop a dictator from suppressing their own people. That's about the only time I'll tolerate. Like Hitler, he would have been okay with Hitler. Or yeah, even... like or certain country, like certain countries, they are oppressing their people. And Russia is actually on that list. Right. Like Putin is actually doing that. But, but yeah, online Discord <laughs> has gotten so out of control that if you so much as say, 
Okay, I don't think this person is the <coughs> worst person we've ever had for this position. People will actually try to burn your house up. Yeah, I mean... You, That's happened a few times. People have... Not your house. No, 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 no. Okay. Not my place, but, like, I've heard of stories where... A mob showed up outside a person's home for literally saying, you know, I don't think Donald Trump is the worst president we've ever had. Yeah, yeah, well, it's certainly, a, have, do you remember when you're, how old you, 36? Well, you don't know. I mean, when you're in your, your 20s, this is a very volatile time right now, would you yeah. say? Yeah, and anyone who is even suggesting showing up a so it's boys, you need to get your mental health in check. Like, and it's getting to the point where I'm now praying more often for people's mental health than I've prayed probably in general otherwise. Right. Because the amount of people who are dealing with mental health and not addressing it is scary. Like, and I hate to somewhat stereotype, but whenever I see a person wearing a mask these days, yes, we've just recently had certain bouts of COVID, so it's a little understandable, but some people, when COVID wasn't even an issue in the country anymore, we're still wearing masks, and I'm like, "Well, they're allowed to do that, though. Right? I mean, they're so, allowed to do that, but because because their their mental health may be saying, hey, you know, and it works both ways. Yeah, I think the introducing masks into the country, you're going to end up inevitably seeing some people wearing masks for the rest of their lives a lot of times. Yeah, right? and that that's not healthy physically or mentally because you're restricting oxygen flow. Uh-huh. Gotcha. So, that's why I've been, uh, somewhat, depending on the person, I can understand. Like, if you work around people with mental health issues or you're currently sick, perfectly understandable if you want to wear a mask. Yeah. yeah. But if you are sick, feel it's like you should just stay home because if you're gonna be sick, wearing a mask is just going to make you even more sick. Gotcha. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And that is coming from several friends of mine who are who are health experts online. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I mean, there's plenty of places to get information and, you know, eventually this will all be sorted out and we're probably going to take another 40 or 50 years and we'll figure, okay, now we know exactly what happened and what to do and why we all went through this. But, um, Vincent, those are great topics. It's been great having you back on. Do great you, to have you back. Thank you. Thank you. Um, anything else you want to close with in terms of mental health and, like, get, people get your mental health check, right? Yeah. Just watch but, out for yourself. Yeah. Take care of yourself. And one major suggestion. Yes. If you are chronically online as much as... A bunch of people are these days. Take a week or two off from the internet. Just leave the internet. Go outside. Touch the grass. I know the bee, but touch the grass. Talk to other people in your area. And But if that's not working, seek professional help. That is a great piece of advice. That's, everybody can use that. It's very, very uh, wise of you to say that. This has been Raising Awareness with uh, host Vincent, or I'm the host, with, with this talent, yeah. the expert, uh, Vincent Sism. Vincent, again, thank you for coming back. Tell Bruce his shirt looks very nice on TV. And uh, hopefully we'll see you again sometime soon. Hopefully in three months because I'm aiming for getting back to the original schedule of three months. Oh, that sounds great. We're really glad to have you back. All right. Thanks a lot.